In this video, we will learn how a digital Fourier analyzer works along with its block diagram. So, digital Fourier analyzer. By seeing the name itself, we can say that it is a Fourier transform analyzer. That means it shows the transformed signal. That means time domain signal going to be converted into a frequency domain. That samples are going to be displayed on the screen of CRT. So, the Fourier analyzer basically takes a time domain signal, digitizes it using digital sampling and then performs the mathematics required to convert it into frequency domain and display the resultant spectrum. It is as if the analyzer is looking at the entire frequency range at the same time using parallel filter banks measuring simultaneously. <coughs> that means the uh, frequency conversion, the time domain signal con after converted into frequency domain after passing through filter banks. So that means to get the narrow frequency spectrum, we are passing the signal into parallel filter banks to measure the frequencies simultaneously. The Fourier analyzer is able to capture the periodic as well as random and transient events. So now, before going into the complete block diagram, let us see how the operation is going on. What is the basic principle of this digital Fourier analyzer? So here we are giving the input waveform is a sampled waveform to the first Fourier transform processor. So first Fourier transform processor is a processor. It takes a sample version of the input signal. See here the input signal is sampled. That means sample of the input signals are going to be given to this fast Fourier transform. So fast Fourier transform will process the signal and convert this time domain signal into frequency domain signal. That frequency domain, frequency domain already in the spectrum analyzer I told you how the frequency domain signal is going to be displayed on the spectrum analyzer. How it is? So y axis it represents the amplitude like your normal CRO but on x axis it shows a frequency instead of time period. So frequency at particular frequency f1 what is the amplitude so at particular frequency f2 what is the amplitude like this a frequency sample along with its sample is shown on the display of crt screen okay so here each and every frequency like f1 f2 f3 and so on all these individual frequencies are going through individual filter banks to get narrow passband responses at each and every frequency now let us see the block diagram, complete and detailed block diagram of this uh, Fourier trans, uh, fast Fourier analyzer. So before going to that, uh, some limitations are there. However, it does have it does have its limitations, particularly in the areas of frequency range, sensitivity, and dynamic range. So Fourier analyzers are becoming more prevalent as the analog to digital converters and DSP technologies advance. <coughs> These analyzers can offer significant performance improvements over conventional spectrum analyzers but often with a price premium. See the advantage of a Fourier analyzer is more compared to normal spectrum analyzer uh, but here the cost involvement is also a factor. So let us see the complete uh, detailed block diagram of this <coughs> digital Fourier analyzer. The entire block diagram has been divided into three sections input section and control section and display section. So input section is having where the inputs are, input signals are going to be applied in terms of time domain. Here it is having two channels. This is channel 1 and this is channel 2. In bit, from these two channels, we are applying our signal which we want to display in time domain. So after passing through this input section, the output is given to this control section. Control section is a memory location where the FFT processing is going to be done. So that is the control section. After the processing is done, the output of this control section is given to display section. That display section give, displays the signal on this ERT screen. So here <coughs> a time domain signal is going to be given time domain signal is going to be given that is at channel 1 and at channel 2. Both the sections are same whatever the channel 1 signal is going through the same channels that are that the channel 2 is also taking. So the output of this channel 1 is passing through two filters that may one is a 30 kilohertz filter another one is 300 hz filter. <coughs> 
here it is the 30 kilohertz and 300 kilo 300 edges uh, says it is a cut off frequency it is a cut off frequency what well, depending upon the input the signal frequency whatever the selective frequency that goes through this 30 kilohertz or 300 hedges the output of this one is given to 12 bit analog to digital converter 12 bit analog to digital converter that means the entire signal analog signal is going to be converted into a digital domain because the fft processor takes the samples digital samples and the, those samples are going to be processed <coughs> So 12 bit analog to digital converter output is passing through a multiplier. Here the multiplication is the incoming bits are going to be multiplied by sine CF. Sine some uh, a function is taken here. Sine CF. The output of this one is passing through a wide band amplifier. Here the other channel is having a multiplication factor that is cos. So, one is sine and one is cos, these two are multiplied together, that means cos is multiplied with the signal that is coming from the channel 2. These two are multiplied together and again added up, the output of this one is given to this FFT processing unit. So, when you are taking the FFT processing unit, it is having a memory location because it is a digitalized domain. So, it is having a memory location, 48 kilobytes of memory and where the processing, we can set the speed and everything here by entering the <coughs> keyboard or controller. And it is the FFT processor where the processing is going to be done. So, the control section is the channel between that is connected between the input section and the display section where it takes the data from the input section and sends the data to the display section. Okay, so once the processing is done, F50 processing on the input samples is going to be done. The output of this one is given to this display section. What is the purpose of display section? The incoming samples are going to be displayed on the CRT screen. Okay, so here the output of this control section is given to a character generator. <coughs> character generator. So what is the purpose of character generator? It generates the particular amplitude at the required frequency level. So, characters are going to be generated here that means the amplitudes are going to be set by this character generator and the output of this one is passing through a stroke generator and then CRT screen. Okay. So, whatever the blocks that are given here input section, control section and display section detailed uh, uh, um, that means the output the input signal time domain signal is passing through each and every section and finally going to be converted into a frequency domain signal. That means here we are giving the input signal, we are giving the input signal in a time domain pattern, in a time domain pattern, the output is a frequency domain signal, the output is a frequency domain signal. If you observe the operation of spectrum analyzer, <coughs> if you observe the operation of spectrum analyzer, that will also do the same operation. It takes the input signal and displays the spectrum in the output of CRT screen. Okay, that is what the uh, limitation of the spectrum analyzer. The spectrum analyzer is also same, working with the same principle. But here, the advantage of this digital Fourier analyzer is it gives the spectrum analyzer output where the freak, uh, four, fast Fourier transformed output is going to be given. <coughs> That too, it is taking number of filters. So, filter banks we are using. So, because of this existing filter banks, it gives the narrow passband output. So, that accurate frequencies and amplitudes are going to be set by using this digital Fourier analyzer. But whereas in the spectrum analyzer, it is just displaying the frequency samples without any taking filter bank methods. Okay, so it is somewhat advantageous compared to normal spectrum analyzer, but it is cost effective. <coughs> compared to the spectrum analyzer, this is much more cost effective because it is having lot of circuitry. Every number of filters we are using, FFT processor we are using and separate display section we are using completely for the purpose of the accurate and uh, so, what is that accurate frequency responses at individual frequencies, the number of filter banks as we are using at each and every stage. Okay, so though your normal spectrum analyzer gives the same type of operation, but it is a most sophisticated method to compare to normal method. 
so here he as we have in the crvo section here also we have uh, two channels in the input section if you observe it is having two channels it is having two channels like channel 1 channel 2 a trigger pulse is applied <coughs> trigger pulse is applied at the input section to multiply to uh, that means to energize the input channel 1 and channel 2 okay you can better understand why we are using a trigger pulse and channel 1 channel 2 for the purposes of individual channels and trigger pulse when we discuss the concept of crvos okay so our next topics are coming to the oscilloscopes so there we will you will learn how the channels are working and how the signals are going to be displayed from channel 1 and channel 2 and there you will understand what is the purpose of trigger generator also trigger is nothing but a shortest duration pulse it is the shortest duration pulse that will and uh, that means that will awaken the input signal <coughs> okay and a noise generator is also there suppose if you want to add any noise in the input signal then the noise generator is also there so this is the noise generator where the noise generator output can be given to any of the channels where you want to add here it is not connected in this block diagram if you want to add you can also show it in the required way okay so this is the digital fourier analyzer how the output signal is going to be generated in terms of time frequency domain where the input signal is a time domain signal Thank you.